Today I'll give you a rundown on the Alienware AW3423DW's monitor menu. As you can see this nice looking color, it really looks like the Odyssey G7's monitor menu. That nice bluish color really looks nice, but this Alienware monitor menu does look antiquated as it seems they haven't updated it for a very long time. Which as long as it gets you to where you gotta get to and change what you need, it shouldn't matter, but a high-end monitor should look a little bit better. Again, I have tested a lot of monitors with different menus. Even the LG C1 and 2 TVs are getting that monitor gamer upgrade. Just like the LG 27G P950, it's more more gamerish versus a GN version. Anyone that has those monitors or TVs, you know what I'm talking about. And right when you turn on the monitor menu before we begin, you do see at the top of the monitor the preset modes of standard, smart HDR if it's on or off, G-Sync, and the dark stabilizer. Now G-Sync cannot be turned on or off from the monitor nor is FreeSync. You have to do everything through the software through Windows. To enable G-Sync, you have to do it through the NVIDIA control panel. And FreeSync does work as the Xbox does have 1440p 120Hz with VRR on. So it does have FreeSync on this monitor. And very soon, the Sony PlayStation 5 will have the VRR option enabled. And you'll be able to use it on this monitor also. But here, starting off with the picture presets, we have standard creator FPS, RTS, RPG, sports, Game 1, 2, and 3, warm, cool, and custom color. Now I like RPG mode as to get an amazing picture with the saturation of this monitor as it's 99.3% of the DCI-P3 color coverage for outstanding color. The RTS is too saturated, RPG is toned down, but standard looks to be the most neutral. Now if you go to Game 1, you can even tweak it more by reducing the saturation if you think standard is too high. Creator mode is amazing with its DCI-P3 color gamut and the sRGB mode. All I can say is beautiful. If you want to edit on this monitor, it's one of the best as I still love my LG Nano IPS LG 27G P950 for editing. That's my preferred monitor. That's just my preference. But so far I've been editing on this monitor and in ultra wide form, it's super easy. It gives you so much real estate. And I just keep it on sRGB mode as I am not too familiar with DCI-P3 color coverage in editing. But you can do both. It's amazing. And I'm happy this monitor has it as the beautiful Dell S2721 DGF does not have an sRGB mode even though it's 98% of the DCI-P3 color coverage missed opportunities. But again, doesn't matter. We're getting it now and that's all that counts. And that's a must feature if you really edit videos or pictures. It comes in really handy. Again, you're paying all this money, you want to make sure your monitor can try to do everything as much as possible. And of course, do it the right way. Here we have the game enhanced modes with the timer, frame rate, and display alignment. And here with the dark stabilizer, which is not a black equalizer. Again, friends, a lot of Alienware and Dell and LG monitors have dark stabilizers, which let you see more shadow detail in darker areas. What black equalizer does, which this does not have, give you a better perceived contrast with black and white. So that's why I say with the G70A, it is one of the best IPS panels, almost making it look VA-ish. But again, you need to see it for yourself to understand what I'm talking about. But QD OLED or OLED is black and you don't need any kind of contrast enhancement because black is black and the shadow detail is there as this monitor does not give me any perceived black crush that I've been able to see versus other monitors. So that's a big win for this OLED technology. Now with the special HDR mode that actually gives you this amazing picture, the HDR400 True Black and the HDR Peak 1000. And I'll list on screen what my findings were. But basically, HDR400 keeps everything around 4 to 450 nits with very minimal fluctuations in brightness when you're web browsing or viewing your content. While HDR Peak 1000 does give you that HDR highlight that you want, but there is fluctuations which I've been able to see while web browsing or editing. And since I have a lot of little windows, it does fluctuate. So all you got to do is keep it on HDR 400 if you would create content, I would say, but keep it on HDR 1000 for your gaming and content needs. Again, you need to experience this with HDR on as if you keep it on SDR mode, it doesn't matter what you pick, it won't get bright enough. And to me, SDR on this monitor looks really dull. To get that awesome highlights and that awesome punchy picture, enable HDR and you'll be good to go with HDR Peak 1000. But don't forget to turn on that SDR slider all the way to the right so your SDR content gets that lift in brightness and OLED pop. Now with more options, we have here 100% brightness and 90% contrast as I have it right now. Again, OLED is a different beast versus every other panel that I have. And for me to enjoy it, I need to crank up this monitor all the way. For my liking, 
it's barely enough to get me wowed or happy with it versus all my other monitors. Here we have the input source with DisplayPort, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and the auto select. Here with the Alien FX lighting, where you can control all four zones and have your color and lighting effects. With the back Alienware logo, the back ring, the down light, and the power button. Not too much RGB on this monitor versus other ones, and it's not too bright. While in pictures it may look really illuminated and bright, it's not bright. I can barely see it with my RGB lighting around the room. That's why if you've seen in my videos, I try to match the color of the monitor light with that teal or light blue lighting to make it more immersive and everything can go together. I mean, I'm happy it has it. And that's that extra premium look and feel when you're using your monitor. The most important thing on a monitor is of course the picture quality, the speed, the contrast, the colors, and the brightness. That's my preference. But number two, you do want your monitor to look premium and to have these little touches like slim bezels, LED lights, curve or no curve. It's little things like that that go a long way when you buy something and you're not gonna upgrade for a long time. And with the audio, if you connect speakers through a 3.5 millimeter jack, you can control the volume here through the menu. Again, with more menu settings, you can change your language, the transparency of what you are seeing right now on this monitor menu, a timer, and the reset. And also, as you saw in the beginning, the personalized area, when you hit that monitor menu button, left, up, right, down, you can scroll left or right to get faster to the shortcut keys. As there is no buttons like other monitors on the back of the monitor, it's only the nub and that's how we navigate. And here with the display info, the firmware, the service tag, ambient light sensor and eco mode, and the OLED panel maintenance. First thing you gotta do when you get this monitor is turn off the ambient light sensor unless you want to try that feature. I don't want my picture to dim when the light changes around my room. I keep it off and I manually set it. And the eco mode, turn that off if you're gonna experience the HDR in any form. If you keep that on, you're gonna have a dull looking picture. But again, friends, you do what you gotta do, trial and error, and you just set it to what you like. The display info will give you your current reading. If it's at 3440 by 1440, at 175 hertz 144 hertz and if you have a console connected 1440p or 1080p at 120 hertz will show up so you will see on your consoles if you are running at 120 hertz so that's cool that it updates and here with the oled panel and maintenance we have pixel refresh and panel refresh and just going over what these options do so you know what to expect if this is your first oled monitor which it was for me now the oled pixel refresh what it states here in the alienware's manual is to maintain image quality the pixel refresh function will automatically activate when the monitor is turned off this may take several minutes the power indicator will blink until the process is finished during the process do not unplug the power cord from your monitor it flashes green about eight to ten minutes what i usually do when this happens is that i just leave it on standby when i shut off my pc i usually do that with all monitors and in about five minutes it just turns off right it dims it goes asleep standby mode and when you turn on your computer it turns back on but what this Alienware does is that you leave it on standby and then once it shuts off, let's just say example five minutes, it will go into the pixel refresh mode and it'll pixel refresh itself, which is really cool because you don't have to do anything when the monitor's panel is up and it's due for a pixel refresh, it'll do it. And then next time you turn on your computer, you're good to go. So it's a careless, hassle-free, burn-in proof monitor tool that works really well and once you get those notifications you can disable notifications and it'll just do it automatically when you go on standby or if you just physically turn off your monitor it'll do it because the monitor knows when it's time to do it so you don't have to worry about it so that's cool that they made this feature easy for everybody it's leave it alone and do what you got to do and by the time you're going to play the next day you're good to go. Now the pixel refresh option automatically does it about after 20 hours of usage. Now I use my monitor a lot. I extensively test. I game, I web browse, I edit. I do everything because usually when I buy a monitor or TV, I put it through everything I possibly can in those 30 days, right? Because if it fails within 30 days, it's a poorly built monitor or TV. So you'll know in those 30 days if it's gonna last you a long time. And just like the manual says, Every single day, I do get a notification because I haven't disabled it yet, because I'm still testing. And when I shut off my computer and I'm leaving my room, I do see the little green light turn on. So I am leaving my monitor on over 20 hours per day for the last two weeks. So about every other day or every day, I do see this pixel refresh. Again, it doesn't bother. It does it automatically when you shut off your computer and you go about your day. You're not gonna have an issue whatsoever. And it's a monitor menu tool that helps you prevent burn-in. But there is a panel refresh 
and when a static image is left on your OLED panel for several hours, activate the pixel refresh function to maintain image quality. Select proceed to turn off your monitor to activate the refresh function now. The process will take about an hour to complete. I have not done this whatsoever yet. And it continues to say during the refresh process, you may see a color line scrolling on the screen with the power indicator blinking. Do not unplug the power cord from your monitor. And again, friends, it does say here, the panel refresh is selected and used and activated with a usage time of about 1500 hours. This is when this panel refresh option will notify you that it's time to do it and you have to manually do it. And it says here you select proceed and it will run automatically. The process takes about an hour to complete. So that panel refresh, it seems, does not do it automatically like the pixel refresh does. So the panel refresh refresh after a long time 1500 hours again i haven't ranked up that many hours yet in my two weeks of usage it seems here it won't automatically do it you will have to enable it but it will give you a warning or notification and you just do it at a convenient time and i will make a separate video on that pixel refresh friends when you're editing or web browsing, if this is your first time having an OLED panel, you will see it. It is annoying. Not being honest with you, I'm not used to it. I don't like seeing that, but I understand it's a monitor prevention tool. There is no way to disable it. And if you don't see it or it's not doing it, you have a defective panel because this is a preventative burn-in image retention pixel moving feature that protects your monitor from static images. That's the whole point. That's why it's called pixel shift that's why it's shifting the pixels so it doesn't stay static for too long just wanted to show you the monitor menu of this amazing qd oled monitor it's a beautiful monitor the wait times are crazy long and it just goes to show how amazing qd oled technology and how in demand it is for pc gaming coming up we have the samsung odyssey g8 q and b the qd oled ultra wide gaming monitor from samsung and the new qd oled tvs from samsung and sony which will finally bring qd oled technology to the mainstream market of tv consumers so friends, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did find it helpful, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on a future Alienware AW3423DW QD OLED Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor video. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys next time.